Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint a water lily, but not the regular pink kind, we're going to try a yellow one today. So grab your paints and let's get started. So we're going to start with a little bit of a drawing exercise. Um, so I'm going to just draw a little oval on the page and from that, that's going to be the centre of our lily, so everything's going to come from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a sort of cut Little oval and from there because the central point would be just a little bit higher than the base of it and essentially that's where the, the sort of first round of petals is going to come. Then from that either you can draw the petals if you want um, where they're all just going to very much sort of come from the center so you just got to imagine that they're feeding out like that so they're going to obviously be much more squat coming from they're coming sort of straight out at the at the camera at the camera at the viewer um, and they're going to be a bit longer towards towards the side or you can just use the central point as a guide to just do brush strokes with you know with your brush and and create petals that way um, but it can be kind of comforting to just have a drawn guide so yeah i was i had no idea there was such thing as a yellow water lily but i'm excited to have a go um, because also we need to think about which petals do we paint first okay that feels like a like a fairly good amount because yeah the other thing with drawing them all is we feel a little bit like uh, I don't know which ones are the closer ones which ones are further away well what we're going to do I've got my um, large round in here just in case it might be really nice for the larger petals um, but let's get some colour mixed first so I'm going to get cadmium yellow it's a very strong bright yellow so we want to mix in plenty of water but also I think a bit of yellow ochre just kind of knocks it back makes it a bit more honey coloured and that's what I really like okay so I'm going to get my large round really nice and wet and make sure it's got a nice fine point if you want to sort of twizzle it in your palette to get it a nice fine point also you don't want it too sopping wet so just get rid of the water off the rim of the jar and then I've got plenty of water in my palette here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in the outermost petals nice and dilute If you do end up with a little blob like that, you feel like you've got too much water, you can just lift colour off like that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of nice. I think now I probably want to go down a size. So now I've handily got this brush um, and I will just paint in this one here. And I'm going to very faintly, it's got to be really dilute this colour. I'm going to just paint in the tips. So I'm not going to go all the way into the centre now. So 
So we've got them all painted in and they're all starting to dry a little bit, but they're still a little bit wet. And I just want to place in just the tiniest bit of a greener tone, just sort of around the base of that main cup that we've not painted in any petals of yet. And then I also want to just start introducing a tiny bit of shadow. So I've got Burnt Sienna, Payne's Grey, but my goodness me, it needs to be so faint. Okay, so it's a bit like that. And then just sweeping the tiniest bit along the edges. There we go, okay, whoops. So I'm just going to let that dry now and I will be just rubbing my pencil out lightly before we go to the next stage. So you can see now it's dried that those, and, and I've rubbed out part of the pencil, that those little bits of shadow really do make such a difference. Now, this means that I can now draw in the petals in this central cup and the reason I like to do these sort of just after and, and separately to the rest is they sort of go in a slightly more well they angle more to the top and it's just it would be a lot of pencil if we uh, yeah if we had all these in And we're going to get some where they actually curl in and then from that center we're going to have the central lovely bits in there so we're going to paint in these petals now so you can see we've got a little bit of sort of um, frilling and stuff at the raw edges of the paint that's absolutely fine I'm going to just sort of paint in with a slightly rounded action And just by doing that, it just softens the petals there. And I'm going to place in a little bit of that other colour at the base. I'm now going for a petal that's one away from the one I've just painted, just to allow them to settle in and so they don't bleed into each other. So I'm painting these a, a, just a fraction more vibrantly, a bit more colour. It's just so they stand out just that little bit. Um, so we'll let those dry. We've awkwardly got two that are going to be next to each other, so it'll take a little bit of time, but we'll get this filled up. While we wait for that to dry and for us to be able to do little bits on there, we're going to do something pretty cool. So this is this is all very nice, but a water lily, well, the clue's in the title, really, it's on the water. So we are going to define it by painting in a bit of water. So I'm just using Payne's Grey and a size 4 brush so it's very important that your brush isn't too small for this because we need to get a good smooth coverage quite fast. I've also got some some sap green because I thought it'd be kind of fun to have a few curves of lily pads but on the whole, it's a bit of a sort of abstract approach. So I'm using the fine point. Oh no, it's not a four. I'm using a size six. Gosh, look at that. So I'm doing a little section at a time, making sure I'm really getting in there. 
and just adding some water to my brush making sure that we're not getting a uh, a sort of a, a, a line of the edge of the uh, outline you see so what I mean is we'll paint that nice crisp line and a crisp one in there but then work quite fast to make sure we can blend that out but it, it does seep in quite fast especially with a strong color just kind of playing around with the background not being too sort of specific with it so I'm just going to go around the edge and just blending out until we've got a, a full coverage around the edge so it really suddenly pops off the page doesn't it um, okay I've also rubbed out the pencil in the center for those central flowers. I'm now going to do the detail in right in the middle. So I've got some cadmium orange, cadmium yellow mixed up, quite concentrated, and I've got a size zero brush, which I think will be pretty good. And I'm just painting in sort of lines slightly at random and quite concentrated colour that are just trying to bring out the central detail but of course we need to be careful that we don't paint down too far so I've just sort of outlined there so that's a pretty good start and I'll be adding in a bit more detail. But now we've just got to move on to making the petals just uh, stand out a little bit more. So we've got our sort of yellowy green. This, by the way, is just some lemon yellow mixed with sap green that I always have in my palette. It's just very useful. But I'm going to have a very slightly shadowier version. So something similar to what we were using before and now I'm going to use it to paint in each of my petals so I need to sort of decide which petal is on top of which one so I've done a little outline but then it's very important to blend that out onto the outer edges You might get to the point where you need to let it dry, let dry what you have painted before you can paint in another crisp line of a, an underside of another petal. Um, let's see, I've got this one here. At this point, it's either good to refer to a photo or it's just a nice reminder of why we keep a tiny bit of the pencil visible because otherwise we might be a bit stuck trying to work out which petal comes where. Now I've mixed in a little bit of cadmium red into my cadmium orange and I'm doing a little bit extra in the middle. I'm sort of coming down the, the foreground side a little bit of it, just a little. And then I'm going to use the rigger brush to paint in very, very delicately a few 
of the fine detailed lines that you get on a water lily petal. So I'm just using it to just, there we go. Trying to sort of come out from the centre. You don't need much on the brush. And we don't need to go all the way up. But this brush is very useful for these very, very delicate finishing touches. And then I guess the last thing you could do, if you wanted, was to get some, some of that Payne's Grey and just down the front to really add like an extra layer of the shade in the water. So it's not all around, but it's just down in the front and then just splending out there And that just really helps place it because it's all, you know, it's nice doing the, um, the surrounding area, but you really need to make sure that it's not, st that it still looks like it's there and it's not just sort of hovering on top. Uh, so there we have a yellow water lily. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to our patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on. And if you're sharing your work on social media, then tag us at De Winton Paper Co on Instagram. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye.